The COVID-19 pandemic has put supply chain issues into the spotlight, which could be good news for the Ottawa tech startup Redlore. Redlore is helping improve the way companies move everything from pharmaceuticals to food to car parts from point A to point B. Today, we'll explore how their monitoring and tracking technology works, as well as how the company got to the scale-up phase so quickly. That's today on Techopia Live. Hello and welcome to Techopia Live. I'm your host, Sherry Ask with the Ottawa Business Journal. And joining me today is the CEO of Redlore, Nick Van Deerdonk. Nick, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Techopia Live. Hi, Sherry. It's a real pleasure to be here. So to start, for people who aren't familiar with Redlore as a company, can you give us your elevator pitch and describe what Redlore is in about 60 seconds? Sure. So at Redlore, we're on a mission to get rid of supply chain losses and supply chain inefficiencies. On a worldwide scale, we're, we're losing $225 billion uh, in our supply chains uh, on an annual basis. And that's because uh, goods like uh, vaccines, food, they, they get bad uh, while they're in transit, while they're in storage. Uh, goods get damaged, forklift driving into them, vibration on the road. Um, so that's what we, uh, that's what we help our customers get rid of. And how did the idea for this come up? Um, I love the story because I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to. Sure. So before starting Redlore, I was working in the uh, automotive manufacturing sector and automotive, as you know, when you, when you're creating, when you're manufacturing automotive parts, you need to get those parts to your customers in time, in full, and at the expected quality level. And uh, surprisingly, uh, most of our challenges were actually not in the manufacturing itself, but in getting those parts in time um, uh, at our customers' locations. So I, I experienced a lot of problems firsthand with how supply chains are managed today, even in high quality driven um, industries like automotive. And that was uh, a lot of that was the foundation of Red Lore. And you say that the uh, supply chain industry is losing $225 billion in supply chain inefficiencies. And sorry, I said that the, the supply chain industry, but the global economy actually is losing $225 billion to supply chain inefficiencies. So my question for you is, how is Red Lore the solution to that? Um, and and who, who benefits if, if it is? Like, is it the, the consumer who benefits? Is it the client, the businesses? Good question. So um, how we do it is we basically create full transparency across the supply chain. We show um, our customers what is going on, what the condition is of the goods that make their way through the supply chains and in storage. And the way we do that is um, we build little IoT devices like this that have a bunch of sensors in them that continuously monitor what's happening in our environment. Um, the obvious things are temperature and humidity for perishable goods, but also things like a shock from a fall or an impact from a forklift truck or, or even tilt uh, for goods that are sensitive to orientation. So these little devices are, are looking out for unwanted, undesired situations. And as soon as they, they think something's happening or they predict that something may be happening in the future, they will send out that message uh, wherever they are in the world. They will send that to a dashboard where our customers um, can can read those insights and, and take action uh, on it. And just as an example, uh, one of our customers, Canadian customers, uh, they're shipping pharmaceutical products from Ontario to uh, British Columbia, West Coast. Um, so they, they handed over um, the temperature sensitive goods to um, the truck driver. And these goods had to be maintained at a temperature between two degrees and eight degrees Celsius. And it was winter at that time and the outside temperature was within that acceptable temperature range. So the truck driver decided not to switch on the refrigeration in the trailer. 
Now, a few, a few hours later, he was driving through Toronto. The temperature had risen uh, sufficiently to, to come into that, to come close to that danger zone, to come outside of that range. And our devices picked that up, sent early warning signals predicting that something may occur. And uh, by having that insight, the, um, the, uh, uh, our customer was able to contact the driver and say, well, um, something's happening, uh, switch on your uh, refrigeration. And that way they saved the goods worth of $400,000 from, from going bad. Wow, I, that's such a great example. I mean, I can see without this data, without this real time, real time monitoring and tracking, you're almost blind as a company to where your stuff is and, and what's going on. Do you find who benefits in terms of when we save this money, when we can find these efficiencies, do I as a consumer see prices go down? Is it is it best for the businesses? Is it all around? So there, there's, there's benefits at different levels. Uh, obviously, our customers have the benefit that they reduce their, their losses and they increase their efficiencies. And that can be between 3 and 10% of the overall value of the goods that, that they save. Um, now, many, many of our customers operate in, in very cost-driven industries um, like automotive uh, or also just companies who specialize in supply chain operations. So these companies constantly need to watch their, their, their expenses, their cost structure and these losses um, to make a profit at the end of the road. And obviously uh, also the manufacturers, manufacturers, uh, they're incentivized to decrease uh, losses but because that allows them to offer uh, more competitive products to their uh, customers. Yeah. And who is the, who are you guys helping the most, would you say? Are these big international companies who are shipping from China? Um, or would this even be good for like a small local company operating, you know, maybe just moving food around Ontario? Oh, to totally. So the size of the company is, is, is less of a... Um, a constraint. It's really every company who has who has heavy supply chains, who is very much driven by receiving goods in time, processing them, and being able to to um, to send them to their customers. So our customers are are both uh, very large companies like Amazon and Maersk, but also small local companies here in Canada who benefit from making sure that that uh, the goods are transported in in mint condition. Yeah, and want to see those that dashboard itself with the with the does the dashboard make recommendations or, or or is that on the company's job to interpret the data and decide what they want to do from there? So both the devices and the dashboard have built in algorithms that will predict um, when harmful things can happen. Uh, so those predictions are translated in an advice to the customer, uh, to the user. At the end of the day, it's always the human who will take the decision. Um, uh, who, who will, who will um, do the judgment call, but the system will inform and advise on what needs to be done. Yeah. Nick, I just want to take a minute uh, because we've been talking a lot about uh, supply chain solutions to actually talk about banking solutions for businesses. TD's relationship team is committed to your business. They take the time to understand your business and provide banking solutions that can help you achieve your business goals. A dedicated local team allows for deeper customer relationships and better service. They take the time to learn about your business and industry so that they can react to changes in the marketplace and anticipate your business's evolving banking needs. Your relationship team can also connect you with other specialists at TD to help move your business forward. And once you're up and running, TD continues to actively manage your relationship, looking for ways to help you manage and grow your business. And you can learn more at tdcommercialbanking.com. And Nick, coming back to Red Lore, um, I guess as a startup and as a company, uh, th that technology, I mean, I know you showed us the little monitor. It seems like you, it's almost essential in today's supply chain industry. But did you have, as a startup, um, any major challenges getting that off the ground and, and getting it out into the world? Yes, we had, uh, as a startup, there's, there's so many challenges. Um, now, we got lucky from time to time as well. Our, our, our vision was really to, to disrupt this industry because uh, this industry has been driven um, in the last 20 years really by by the the desire to measure the temperature uh, in the vehicle in the trailer basically or in the container and that's been working for a while but um, right now customers are and the market is realizing that um, that's not enough because the goods make their way from a warehouse 
to the trailer, from the trailer to another storage location, et cetera, et cetera. And it's especially at those, those moments where it's handled and no longer at one location uh, where, where things can go bad. For example, uh, a pallet is taken off of the trailer instead of putting it in a storage location, it's, it's standing on the, on the parking lot for a couple of hours and that's where things uh, bad things happen. And the, the, sec the second vision we had is that it's more than just about temperature. It's also about mechanical damage. It's about uh, location, where what were things dropped off? Um, can we detect that without relying on, on, on humans to scan in and scan out things? So that was our, our, our mission. That's how we started the company. Now, um, to, to your question, um, how, how, we, how we started, uh, we got lucky in the very beginning, even before the company was incorporated, to land a customer who had um, a, a real world problem to start with, uh, and second, who had um, a significantly large uh, business um, such that solving that problem for that customer uh, meant that we as a, as a startup company were able to, to bootstrap. So that was really uh, a lucky strike on, uh, on day one that's helped us a lot. And also to along the way in the last uh, three years since we started to um, acquire another number of customers um, that allowed us to solve their problems and at the same time grow the company. Yeah, and I think that's such a fascinating example because a lot of companies will spend two or three years working on a, you know, a piece of technology or a prototype before they launch it, whereas you kind of got to work simultaneously. Um, am, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, absolutely. In, in the beginning, we were very sensitive uh, not to work at the academic level um, and then risk that once we had our product and we came out of stealth mode that we then perhaps didn't actually develop the product that the market uh, needed. So we were very much um, focused and, and honing in on problems that, that the market had. Um, so, so far that's been, been, that's played out really well for us. Yeah, and I know one of uh, the companies that you work with is another Ottawa company, IMI. Do you wanna talk a bit about, about how that came about and what it's meant? Sure, so, yes, so IMI um, here at headquartered here in Ottawa, uh, were, were exactly one of those customers that we met uh, shortly after um, starting. IMI is, is uh, probably North America's largest um, warehouse building company. So if Amazon uh, builds a warehouse anywhere in North America, then uh, chances are, are big that the people from IMI will be there to install the robots, um, install the conveyor belts, and just make sure that everything is ready uh, before the customer starts the warehousing operations. Um, so one thing specifically that we're doing for IMI is that um, there is an inherent risk on, uh, on every uh, warehousing site with the forklifts. Uh, before you can drive a forklift truck, you need to, you need to have a specific driver's license. Uh, you need to be trained to do that. You need to be authorized to do that. And uh, occasionally there was, they found that uh, there was a driver who, uh, uh, or a person, a worker who used a forklift truck without having um, the required uh, authorizations. So by using our technology, by adding our technology, our, our little tags to um, the forklift truck and also to the driver, there's a pairing mechanism where, where uh, the tags automatically detect one another. And if they see that a driver is on the forklift truck who's actually not authorized to do it, then they will uh, send out alarm signals. So our collaboration with what IMI has started, um, had started in, in 20, 2019 and this is really a good example of, uh, of what the benefits are of uh, a local customer here in Ottawa. Yeah, um, I think even listening to you talk about the, the, the forklift example, in the last uh, 16 months, I think people have become even more aware of supply chain issues, of supply chain inefficiencies. We've all ordered stuff online and been frustrated when it hasn't come or it's been delayed. How, how has COVID impacted, do you think, your business? Has it accelerated for you? Um, or because there were interruptions, um, did you uh, see a decrease in business at all? I think on the balance, COVID um, has helped us. Um, it's like you say, um, Almost everybody in the world is now aware of how important our, our supply chains are and uh, that they work efficiently, that goods arrive in time and in the condition expected. Everything's, everybody's aware of it, obviously because of the, the vaccine uh, transport. That's one, but the second, th second thing is also that um, 
the supply chains have increased uh, a lot with COVID, more than they would usually do in such a sh short period. And uh, the reason is, is the vaccines, but also because more and more, more people have been ordering more and more goods uh, online. So that means that the supply chains have come under pressure and that the people, the companies who operate these supply chains uh, have been looking out for solutions like ours to help them make uh, work better. Yeah. And it's obviously, I mean, you say on a balance, it's been good for you. You also received this year a 2021 Bootstrap Capital Award um, from the Ottawa Network. What do you think uh, that, you have guess, got it there? Yeah. Uh, what do you think that says, I guess, about the company's work and how you've been able to grow uh, to where you are so quickly? The Bootstrap Award, I think that was the ultimate recognition that our team um, could get that we're, we're doing the right thing, that we're, we're on the right track and that um, people around us are, are seeing that we're having, uh, we're starting to have success. Um, so we're, we're incredibly honored, honored. We feel incredibly honored that we received this, um, th this uh, trophy and we hope that we uh, will be able to continue on our uh, growth path. Okay. And what is next for Redlore? I mean, if you look uh, five, uh, 10 years down the road, uh, where do you hope to be? So right now, I think we're at, at, uh, at a spot where we, uh, we're going to start scaling up. Um, we've now proven uh, our technology and proven the, the benefits of our technology to our, to our customers um, multiple times in different industries and with multiple customers. So, so right now, our strategy is fully to, uh, to scale up uh, using uh, what we have, improve on that, and, and just uh, expand our reach uh, here in North America and, and also um, uh, also outside of North America. Okay. Well, it sounds uh, fascinating. It sounds like there's a lot going on. Um, I'm definitely uh, hopeful that uh, more companies will have this technology just for my own shipping needs <laughs> as, as we continue to order things online. But thank you so much, Nick. It's been wonderful to talk to you, and thank you for joining us on Techopia Live. It was my pleasure. Thanks, Sherry. And before we go, I just want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, without whom this show would not be possible. Number Crunch, offering virtualized CFO services for SaaS companies. Hurley Robertson, Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. TD Bank, with specialized programs for tech firms the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent, and Stratford Managers, providing services to help you scale your tech venture. Techopia is not just a great show. We are also online with new articles daily at obj.ca slash techopia. If you are on Facebook or Twitter, you can follow us. Our handle is at Techopia OTT. If you are on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the like button, or you can leave a comment down below. And that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back soon with another episode of Techopia Live.